Hello and welcome to this latest video in the OCR GCSE Computer Science series. Uh, pause the video at this point, have a look at the infographic on your screen and see if you can work out what we are studying today. So this is lesson six of unit two, Algorithms and Programming. This lesson is looking at standard sorting algorithms. This lesson finishes off uh, 2.1 algorithms. So unit two is split into five key sections, uh, algorithms, programming fundamentals, producing re robust programs, Boolean logic, and types of languages and IDEs. And this is the last lesson in the first section. So as part of today's lesson, we're going to be looking at three uh, sorting algorithms, a bubble sort, a merge sort, and an insertion sort. We need to know what they are and give a basic overview of how each one works. We're then going to think about the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Pause the video at this point and have a think about these two questions. Why do computers need to be able to sort data and how might that relate to last lesson? Think particularly around the, one of the requirements for a binary search. So our first sorting algorithm is a bubble sort. A bubble sort compares two elements side by side at a time, swapping them into the correct position if needed. It repeats that bubbling process over and over again until the list is sorted. So a bubble sort works in something called passes. A pass means going through the entire list one time, uh, but it doesn't do that once, it repeats that over and over again, going through the list uh, and calling that multiple passes. Each time it compares two numbers at a time. So it compare number zero, or the, the number at position zero, and number one. In this example, we've got 54 and 26. Now those clearly need to be swapped around because they're in the wrong order. It then makes the next comparison, 54 and 93, and checks, are they in the correct order? Well, they are. It repeats that process right to the end, where we'll see it's exchanged 93 and 20. Now that list at the bottom is not in order, that's because that is one pass of the list. It repeats that over and over again until the list is sorted. There are n minus 1 bubbles in a pass. That means the number of uh, numbers in the list minus 1 gives you the amount of bubbles needed. So if there are 20 items in our list, there are 19 bubbles in each pass. There are also n minus 1 number of passes required uh, at a worst case scenario. So we might have 19 bubbles in each pass and that might then be repeated 19 times. Pause the video at this point and have a go at the activity on your screen. Use the internet, research and make notes on the advantages and disadvantages of a bubble sort. Uh, you may wish to make use of the following two websites, Teach ICT and, of course, BBC Bite Size. Pause the video at this point. The answer is on the next slide. So a bubble sort is fairly easy to implement. Uh, you're not particularly going to be expected to program any of these, but you might need to look for some errors in some pseudocode if you were given the given most of the pseudocode. Um, and it, for, for a bubble sort is certainly one that you would be able to program in Python fairly easily. There's only one temporary variable slot needed, so it doesn't need much additional memory to run. If we swap two numbers over, I move number A into a number B's position, that means number B's been overwritten. So I'd need to store num uh, the number B in a temporary variable slot. Uh, the order when the list is already nearly in order is also quite quick. Uh, so if a bubble sort has got a list um, where only one number is in the wrong place, it would be fairly quick to sort the list. The disadvantages. The worst case speed is very, very slow, meaning if the list is totally random or even worse in reverse order, it will take a very long time. There's also a lot of comparisons to be done. The computer needs to do quite a lot of processing in terms of comparing all the different numbers for the n minus one passes and the n minus one bubbles per pass. 
Our next sorting algorithm is a merge sort. A merge sort splits a list into pairs before merging each pair back together into fours and then merging those fours into eights and merging those fours into uh, eights into sixteens. Uh, that will make more sense on the next slide when we look at an example. So if we look at the example on our screen, uh, merge and sort makes use of a concept called divide and conquer. Break the problem down. Uh, quite literally in this case. So we start at the bottom and we've broken the numbers down into 5 and 2, 4 and 6, 1 and 3 and 2 and 6. We merge 5 and 2 together and as we merge them we sort them. We then merge five and uh, 4 and 6 and we merge those as we go. We then merge those pairs into 4s and again we sort them as we're going. We sort the numbers together as we go. If in the exam you were asked to sort of sketch out a merge sort, this would be the sort of thing they were, would be expecting to see. So exactly the same activity as last time. Pause the video. We're looking for the advantages and disadvantages of a merge sort. The answers are coming up. So a merge sort is quicker on large lists because it doesn't need to loop through over and over again. The sorting process just happens one time. It's also fairly consistent in terms of its speed. Uh, a nearly sorted list and a totally randomly ordered list um, would be fairly consistent in terms of the speed. So we can kind of predict how long it will take to sort the numbers. It's slower on smaller lists than some other algorithms. That's a disadvantage. So if we're looking at a small list, it might not be the best one. And it does require quite a lot of memory because it creates quite a lot of new variables. Our final sorting algorithm is an insertion sort. This creates a sorted section of the array containing just one item. We take the first number and assume that is sorted. We then move the numbers into the sorted section of the list one at a time, always inserting them into the correct place. So our grey list in this example is our ordered list and we start off with just one number. If we've got one number, by definition it must be sorted. So 54 is in order if 54 is the only number in our sub list. We're then going to insert 26 into the correct position. We're then going to insert 17, uh, sorry, 93 and then 17. You'll notice that our grey list, our sorted section, is getting bigger and bigger. Our unordered section is getting smaller and smaller. Now it's very important to note, the grey section is not a new list. It's a subsection or a sublist within the original list. Each time we just insert our new numbers, our next section, our next bit that isn't sorted, always keeping track of what part of the array or list is ordered. This might be good if we were someone like Google, for example, and we were getting new websites added each day. If we were sorting those websites, we just insert the new ones from that day into the correct position. Third time lucky on the activity, uh, pause the video at this point, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Pause at this point. So an insertion sort is also fairly straightforward to program. We need to keep track of the ordered list and the unordered list and then we just put the, put the item into the correct place. An insertion sort is very, very quick on nearly sorted lists. If the list is nearly sorted, an insertion sort is probably going to be your quickest one. It is, however, very, very slow if the entire list is out of order um, and exceptionally slow if it's in a backwards order. Um, so we're thinking around how ordered is the list when we're deciding which of our algorithms is going to be best. So that gives us our standard sorting algorithms. Those are our three algorithms that we need to know for the OCR exam. We're now going to have a look at a couple of past exam questions to think about the sorts of things we might have to do in the exam. Pause the video at this point and take a go at this question. The library sorts their books based on a book code. Show the steps that a merge sort would take to put the following books in order. Now I've cropped off the space. You would have a full A4 page to answer that question. Um, and it's a four mark question. Pause the video at this point. The mark scheme is coming up. 
There's the mark scheme for that one. The example is in the bottom right hand side. It doesn't matter whether you drew it going up or drew it going down, but you should be merging pairs into fours and then merging those fours back together. Uh, on the left hand side, it shows you where you're then going to be getting your different marks. You get one mark for the list being split into the individual elements. You get a mark for sorting into pairs, a mark for sorting into fours, and then a mark for the final list in order. Here's another example. Uh, explain one advantage of a merge sort compared to a bubble sort. Pause the video at this point, give this one a go. So a couple of options you could have had here. Um, we're looking for those uh, two marks, so we're going to be explaining uh, whatever we're saying. Something along the lines of faster or quicker to sort, uh, four large lists or four lists that are more unordered. You may also have that it has a fairly consistent running time, so it doesn't depend on how ordered the original list is. So that gives you our three standard sorting algorithms. You won't need to program these, although it could be useful to give that a go. Uh, the real, the, 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 the real past questions seem to focus on uh, show how they would work. Here's an example list, draw it out, or talking around the advantages and disadvantages. So we need to be able to talk around what are the advantages for each one of those and compare them. Thank you for watching. I hope you have found this video uh, useful. This then concludes 2.1 algorithms. So we are one fifth of our way through unit two. Uh, if you have any questions, please do post those either on Google Classroom or in the comments section below. Thank you very much.